Hey, Yoda! Tinigoto, hello and welcome back to another episode of Thomcraft 4.2 with Bertross. As you can see, we are on the border between our home mesa and the swampland that is to the west of the mesa. Yes, I did have to check F3 for that because I, I didn't check in advance. Anyway, uh, what I want to do today is go ahead and explore past the swamp here because, oh well, geez. Loading terrain here, because as you can see, just by that lag spike, um, I have not explored past here. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry. Goodness gravy. Yeah, I have not explored past the swampland here. Oh. Oh. I have not explored... Okay, looks like we've got another one of these Eldritch monoliths, but... Um... What the heck is going on here? Hello? Okay. Okay. What are you? You're a Crimson Knight. Sir. Oh jeez! Four hearts of damage. Okay, but I did manage to scan him. So you're a Crimson Knight. Clearly not friendly. You're moving quite fast. You've got awesome armor on, by the way. How much damage will you take? I have plenty of air in my wand. Oh my goodness, there's another knight back there. Okay, well, you've dropped. You have dropped a void seed. Okay, that guy's coming after me. Okay, let, let, let's bail. <laughs> okay, I did not expect this. I just thought this was going to be a cool little episode just exploring... Exploring the mesa. Not, not the mesa, the, um... Just exploring out this way, but okay. Oh, it seems like they're territorial. Okay, he's not coming after me now that I've done that, even though I murdered one of his buddies. Um, well, I want to go ahead and scan this Void Seed. Oh, here we go. So we've got one Alienus, one Herba, two Tenebri, and two Vacuous. I wonder what on earth you do with these. My guess is that you actually uh, plant this? But what would it grow? Um, I, I guess these questions will need to be answered at some point. Uh, probably very, very soon. I'll go ahead and plant it at the end of the episode if we manage to get back to the base. But anyway... It looks like the, the Crimson Dudes, looks like they've got something brewing over by that, um, that obelisk, uh, I don't know, it's like, well, we took a, it took a long time with this guy to kill one of those, I'm not sure if we're geared up yet good enough to be able to actually murderize those guys in a timely fashion, we're probably going to need to get ourselves the Sword of the Zephyr, as well as what we discovered a couple of episodes ago under the Artifice tab. It's way down here, the Thormium Fortress Armor, that sounds like, well, that sounds like that is the gear that we would need to take those guys down. It, it's probably just going to be like, going to be like a stronger uh, Thormium Armor, but you know, stronger is better, right? Okay, looks like I haven't scanned this guy. It's a normal node. Oh well, what are you going to do? Yeah, I just wanted to bring you guys in here, just because, you know, because sort of stuff like that happens. <laughs> Hey cows, I do have a cow farm back home. I still, I've been meaning to make a nether portal over to the cow farm just to save a bit of travel time, but haven't done that yet. Thought I saw something there. Okay, I do have mushrooms. Oh, is that the mesa right there? Yeah, the mesa does go out quite a bit that way as well. Okay, looks like we're going, getting past the swampland here, and that's a great wood tree I can see back there. That's a, that looks like dark oak actually. Okay. Oh no, it's a uh, it's a flowery biome, isn't it? I'm looking for what I'm mainly looking for is a tiger biome, a biome that has you know the snow in it, you know, just so that I can get my hands on ice because ice is one of the it's almost one of the basic things that you need when you're transporting items. I don't know if there's a way to transport items in uh, Thorncraft. Perhaps there is. We could probably use golems for that, probably, but. Uh, we have yet to research golems. Man, there is so much like I'm so sorry, but, you know, at, at least, at least I, you know I'm telling the truth in that there is no, I have yet to explore this place. That looks like a lava lake. I have seen a lot of these lava lakes around. There's heaps of them in the mesa. Okay, there's a, uh, a node right there. It doesn't look sinister, so that puts my mind at ease a little bit. Okay. Man, that is a big max bike. What is going on? I can see that village right there. It's not the village, surely. 
It's got to be the leaves and the grass and stuff. That this seems to be what kills my computer. I might need to turn the graphics down. Pedicio Ale, hey, yeah, that's not a bad one. Yeah, there's plenty. Basically, what we need to do is capture all of these nodes and make some sort of super giant mega node. Is sort of what is sort of what you you're geared towards essentially. So many explorations. All right, let's see what let's see what's cooking in the village. Assuming the frame rate will return to normal. There we go. Hey guys, I don't want to zap you. Arrow. Nine arrows for some emeralds. That's a bit cheap. I haven't scanned a villager yet. Maybe I did fall the back up. Right, so that's two air and three humanists. Okay. Did I just hear a zombie burn? I'm not sure. Oh, we've got more guys. Let's have a look at their trades. Sure, why not? Yeah, that is a zombie. Cooked chicken. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Fell in the well. <laughs> okay. Wow, yeah, there are so many flowers and stuff, but not a single shred of snow. Dub from the asylum server was telling me about a, a nice little trick if we can't find a tiger biome to elevate yourself into the air. Oh, hello, that's got arbor in it. That's the first node I've seen with arbor in it. That's cool. Now, he was saying that if we find what well, what we can do to make to make ice is to basically build up really high and when it rains and stuff uh, then if you're up high enough it'll create snow and ice okay looks like there's a bit of lava over there let's have a look but uh, I just had a look on the Minecraft wiki and it turns out that that's only the case if you're in an extreme hills biome I was living in an extreme hills biome on the asylum server so pretty much and I was living up high enough on the season one server to where yeah I was getting snowed on whenever it rained okay we appear to have a small forest fire but you know what that happens it's like a birch forest oh my goodness the slag I'm so sorry it makes me look bad whenever it lags like this but that's okay I'm just I'm just not gonna do anything about it we're in this together I want to see if this is an extreme hills hey 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 there it is that works. <laughs> it's still relatively close by. Where are we exactly? Yeah, so 1,500. That's easy enough to get to. We can just do a nether portal. Now hopefully there's some water up here. Uh, fun fact, uh, the ice and snow will only form above Y level 95. It looks like we've got a little bit. So maybe the wiki's slightly wrong. Look, I can see a spruce tree as well. It doesn't look like there's any water up here, but that's okay. We can easily make a, a, a an ice farm up here. So yeah, cool, that solved that problem. Hello, surface amber. The first time I've seen that. That is really cool. It looks like we've got a totem around here. I want to keep exploring. Let's just keep exploring for a little bit longer here, and then I think we'll head back to base. Well, I guess we can research snow. Let's go ahead. So that snow has gelum inside it. The grass block underneath isn't changed. And I haven't scanned ice or anything yet because I haven't seen those. So what do we got here? We got a... that's a sinister node for sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if moving the sinister nodes is a good idea because... Wow, look at all this amber. Wow, that is a lot of amber. Didn't realize it was this common. Wow. There you go. That's a really good source of amber. I mean, I need to eat. This is the last of my steak, by the way. Oh, there's a silverwood tree back there, and I can see that uh, cobweb. Oh man, I'm glad I explored. Oh wow, look at this node. Wow, that's got four primal aspects in it. That is a really nice node. What are the coordinates of this? On YouTube, on yeah, on YouTube video posterityness. <laughs> Not sure if that's a magical forest. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but it was really nice of Azenor. A nice touch to essentially make it to where uh, even if there isn't a magical forest around a silverwood tree will spawn extremely rarely because I have seen silverwood trees outside of a magical forest and what tends to happen is that they will actually make a tiny little magical forest around themselves. I don't know if that's sort of like the airy biomes that spread. I guess we can get up to this guy that's newly generated and find out. Let's have a look. Man that crimson knight kind of it gave me a little bit of a fright there. Wasn't expecting to come across anything like that. Okay. There we go. 
so there should be magical forest. It's birch forest hills right now. I have seen them turn into magical forest, so I do remember seeing one as a magical forest. I'm not sure if it was on camera or not. Birch forest. Okay, anyway, the, the night approacheth. Okay, it's dark enough for one of these guys to turn up. Let's quickly slip the night away. And then let's take a look inside. That's this way. Give me my bed back, my sleeping bag. <laughs> let's take a look in here and see what we got. Alright, there it is. I don't know if you can open these chests without destroying this spawner. No, you have to destroy the spawner. Noted. Let's have a look. Yeah. Man, this is just like vanilla loot right here, guys. More cat, more thingies, and I've still got that seed. I forgot about that. I'm going to have to plant that. But I'm a little bit nervous about what that might do to uh, do to the biome. You guys have sort of been saying that uh, the last aspect we have to discover we can't really get unless we learn about taint. And I have yet to experience taint in Thorncraft 4. I've had a decent look around. You guys know this already. I've had a decent look around and I have yet to see uh, any evidence of taint. You know, in Thorncraft 2, even the Let's Play that I did there, I didn't actually find a taint biome, but I didn't do anywhere near as much exploring in that. And I just tend to hung around that uh, jungle tree that I built. Hey! What are you trying to do? <laughs> what was he trying to do? He's just kind of chilling in here and just like, Oh man, it's a bastard. Time to kill him. Not today, Buster. Well, I still want to keep going a little bit more. I feel like we're about to find the ocean, or a large body of water. I could, I could just kind of sense it. I guess I'm just trying to find a more cobwebby trees, cobwebby great woods to find some more loot. Another ring of protection would be really nice. And those lag spikes. That is really nice. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to explore this swamp unless I can see a witch hut or something. No, I, I can't really see one from here. Yep. Okay, it's time for me to head back to base and we'll, uh... I will go ahead and plant this void seed. Probably not in the base, but somewhere nearby. Alright, we have returned home. And I think it's time to start planting this guy now. I don't have a hole around here. I can't see one. Where have I hidden it? You know, normally I like to make one stone hoe and then that's pretty much... It seems like it's done a runner. I love saying that. That's one of my favorite things to say. You're not seeing anything that I can till the ground with except for this thormium hoe, which I don't want to use. So, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put this close by the base, but I'm a little bit nervous about what's going to happen to the ground. Like, it might create some sort of new eerie biome, is what I'm thinking. So, I sort of want to isolate it if I can, and the best place to do that is probably nowhere near the base. No, that's a, we're going to need to do it close by so that I can keep a tab or two on it. Right, I don't have any dirt. I do have dirt, as it turns out. Let's go ahead and just put it on the hardened clay so that it won't spread it, so that any bad eeriness won't spread over the grass, at least. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's go back this way, over towards the natural spawn point. Alright. Today, the rest of the day, the rest of the day as well today. Let's actually put it near the water, that's a good idea. Make it go a little bit faster. Whatever the heck it is. Obviously I have no idea what this is. Completely random encounter. I assume I have to till the ground and plant this thing and hopefully nothing bad will happen to me or my children. Nope, that's not working. That is not a working, I'm right clicking. Eh. Doing nothing. What am I supposed to use this for then? <laughs> Failure. Uh, I remember in Thorncraft 2 we had these things that were known as Seeds of Darkness back then. I think that's actually the same texture. But they were used mostly for Eldritch research, I believe. I don't think you could do anything with them. Basically, you took a regular weed seeds, you had this box that you put them in and they turned into seeds of darkness. That's how that worked. Well, 
This thing is a mystery. You guys will have to let me know what the heck this is used for. I hope this doesn't stink out this. These as much as these guys do. What's the recipe for the brain in a jar? I I've actually forgotten. I sort of put it out of my mind. You guys have sort of been saying that maybe these things can can actually sort of AFK XP for you, which is really cool. So I could set it up near the zombie spawner and get free XP whenever I just want to head over there. It's moderate. And I don't really have that much Exanimus yet. Okay. Well, we're going to need to work on that some other time. Today, I want to work on getting some arcane bellows and putting them onto the the infernal furnace that we made last time. It looks like that's going to take your bog standard planks, leather, air shards, of course, as well as some iron ingots. There were holes for three, but I think we're going to make about four or so. It's probably a decent number, so hopefully we should be able to use these. Let's just quickly try and dump some of this junk. Finally got some eggs around here. I killed some chickens on the way because I needed a few more feathers and I don't have a steady supply of feathers around the base. So I killed some on the way back. Uh, oh, what was that? Redstone gunpowder does not go in there. I have so many records of Cat and 13, I'm probably just going to end up burning some of them because I just... I, I can't store like 20 different copies of the same thing. Having said that, I store a heap of cobble. <laughs> Get rid of some of that. Just keep some on us just in case these. Well, you know, for situations. Alright, we've got some dirt just in case these and stone hoe. That can go away. Alright then, let's get started. We are going to need more iron. What is. What? What? What is cobblestone doing in my iron slot? <laughs> let's get some air shards. We're going to need four of those. I've got a decent amount of leather still. I need to go to the cow farm because, as I said, that's the last mistake. And we're gonna need wood, that's right. So we should be able to head over to the over to the arcane workbench and craft these guys up. Now the day of us moving pretty much all of our storage and stuff over to here is going to be extremely soon because walking over here is kinda of boring and not all that great. I find it annoying to have to do, so we're gonna avoid that if possible. Very soon. Not today though, not today. Right, let's get those. Over there, right? Uh, something like that. And this. There we go. That makes arcane bellows, which are already pumping up and down. Oh, I don't have my crafting armor, but whatever. Right, so that's going to fill up on auto, and it's down 30 air. No, I don't want those. So we've got these arcane bellows. So apparently what these are supposed to do is make the infernal furnace work a little bit faster. Let's just quickly check. Show an interesting results from fused air, strength of flames, increasing speed. Pure resulting in a reduction of flux, so this is pretty much what we want to do almost immediately before we even use the thing. Creating bonus nuggets and other materials when smelting, yes, so that's good. Having them is only good, and it seems like they power themselves. Right, so if I put that in there, it doesn't. I don't think this thing has a UI. Is that just going into me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I just want to stab back to sort of see if it's sort of draining these from me, so... I don't know if I can put more of these on there. How low the top of this? Don't put, don't, don't throw the clay in there. Okay, we guess we need to try and test this thing out and see how it works. So let's go ahead and get some of my unprocessed iron. I should have some iron and gold around that I should be able to boil up now. And normally I wait for about 32 to use with alimentum. But now that I've got this, I can sort of avoid doing that. And we might take a bit of cinnabar as well just to see what happens. I normally just like to keep this just because, well, I am going to burn it if I need it, but I've got a decent amount of quicks on it, so yeah. Let's go ahead and try this stuff out and see what happens. So we've got 15 iron, 1 gold, and 21 cinnabar. Remember that. Only one of these is legally able to... I think the drinking age in New Zealand is 21. I can't remember if they put it up. I think driving went up to 16. I remember that being a recent thing. Get out of my way. Right. So let, let's see what happens. It said you just throw them in. Okay, there we go. Out they come. They're sort of landing right on top. And I think... I think that's going a little bit faster because it's... Yeah, you can see that's definitely draining out, Ignis. Okay, and it's finished. Right, so that was able to produce... Wow. Wow. 
from 15 iron. That produced 36 iron ingots and 12 iron nuggets. Holy crap, man. Let's see, if I did the normal furnacing, that would have been what I got. This is purely bonus. That is over double. Like, how? that's at least another iron ingot from the iron nuggets. Wow! Holy crap, guys. If you don't have an infernal furnace in your world, get one now. <laughs> I'm like a salesman. That is incredible. That is incredible. Let's try it with gold. <laughs> I'm really excited to keep using this thing now, but it looks like it spits it out right in front there. So if I could set up some sort of a hopper to catch that, that'd be really cool. Throw the gold in, what do we get? Out of a single piece of gold, we're probably only getting like a gold ingot. No, that's two nuggets! Three nuggets even! The efficiency! The efficiency! Nice one. Free stuff. Can't argue with that. Do I get quicksilver drops, etc.? If I throw cinnabar in there? What do we get? Yeah, that's throwing out quicksilver drops as well. Wow. Oh, and it's giving out uh, XP as well. Okay. So this is just throwing XP on the ground as well. So that's like, if I could get a... If I could get one of the brains in a jar over here, that could pick up the XP for me. That'd be really nice. Those are down here. I just want to see the recipe again. Examinus, I, I can definitely get all of these. It's just a question of, uh, you know, grinding them. Anyway, so that was 21 Quicksilver, which is how much we had, and that's 25 bonus Quicksilver drops. So that's not quite as amazing as the iron was. That's an extra two, and then seven of these. So that's, that's still good. Don't get me wrong, that's still good, but it's not amazing. For the Quicksilver, anyway, the iron is fantastic. Wow. Yeah, man, that was really cool. That is definitely, uh, that's the, that's the furnace solution solved for now. That's exactly what I wanted. Having a real shortage of iron. And that is going to sort us out for a long time. Probably for the rest of the game. Well, not this iron, just that solution. i get these in here. Quicksilver drops. Yeah, these need a proper place to live now. That's a heap of stuff. That's beautiful. Beautiful, even. Let's get these in here, and now it is time to finish off with some research. So what are we going to research today, I wonder? Let's just go ahead and do some of this basic stuff that's around that we sort of should have done a while ago, but haven't really done. The flex scrubber could be cool. I'm thinking of these things over here. I've seen these for a long time. And I really wanted to see what they're all about. The paving stone of travel and, travel and warding. So this one over here is going to cost three Ita, three Terra, and three Velatus. Is that the right word? Yes, it is. Go ahead and pick it up and let's see what it is. By altering the magical structure of arcane stone, you are able to create a paving stone that adds new bounce to the step of anyone walking across it. Anything walking across it will have a greater speed and agility for a couple of seconds. Oh! Speed and agility, huh? Alright, so that's going to be arcane stone bricks, air and earth jar, because, you know, they just want to soak up my air shards. Yikes. And, you know, and that's, that's going to be in the arcane wreckage. That gives you four, though. Uh, that might be worth a try. That's worth a try. Let's but let's get this other one first. That's going to be three modus. Let's quick pick that up. Pick that up. One, two, three. Bish, bash, bosh. Done. So let's have a look at the paving stone of warding. Oh, actually, was there another page on this? No. Okay, there's a page over here. You have discovered a way of turning arcane stone blocks into mystical wards that will prevent most creatures from crossing them. It should be noted that these wards aren't always 100% foolproof, and they cannot prevent other players from entering an area, but to keep most common threats at bay. They'll also prevent golems from crossing them. Oh, okay. For when I get around to golems, I can sort of make specific paths for them, I suppose. For the best results, you need an unbroken line of them between the areas you wish to protect and the outside world. An active redstone signal will disable the lock. So that's going to take pretty much a similar story, Arcane Storm Bricks, and then Fire and Auto, Auto Shards. So what would the other ones make? So if this one takes Air and Terror, 
And this one takes fire in order. What does Padisha and Aqua make? Hmm, Dilla hmm. That'd be a, that's a nice little expansion right there. Anyway, more of this. The color of the runes above the paving stone indicates its current status. Purple runes show that it is currently preventing something from passing through. Blue runes indicate it has been deactivated by the redstone signal. Red runes show that something is preventing it from fully warding an area, and a gap exists where something may be able to pass through, so it's like a security fence. Hmm. I, I realize just how powerful something like this is, but I don't... I can't really think of any way to use it yet. I, I you know, so like I just said, the, you know, the power of this is potentially unlimited. You could sort of... I guess that sort of abolishes the door. We could get rid of our door, basically, because nothing can pass through. Hmm. Okay, well, let's go ahead and craft some of these. Let's see, we need some more of these. I made a bunch of these as well, so that's cool. I uh, should just better craft these like that. Yeah. So let's get a decent bunch. Bish bash bosh. Oh, let's get one of these, one of these. And we needed these two. So yeah, I'm very interested in seeing if uh, Entropy and Aqua, some sort of block involving those would come along. Something to do with the uh, water, I suppose. Something, something cool with water. Anyway, I got an extra bellow. I want to see if this works. Can this connect to Essentia Tubes? Uh, do I have my tool around? Oh, come on, where would I have put it? Where is it? Oh man, I've lost my tool. That was probably in here. Nope. Where is it? The video will not continue until I find this thing, guys. The Essentia Resonator is what I'm talking about. You guys have seen it already, I'll bet ya. I got no clue. I haven't seen it yet. Normally eyes are quite my eyes are quite good at stuff like this, but I'm not seeing it. I know where it is. It's over here. I remember putting it there. There it is. Anyway. <laughs> so we that has no suction, it's not interactable at all. I've got a suction of sixty two aqua, but that's only because that guy's right there. So it doesn't seem to interact with Essentia tubes at all. It'd be really cool. It would just be so cool if I could stick like a jar label on this and have it sort of suck things. That way I could, I could make a big network. What do you think, guys? Let me know about that. That's just sort of an idea that I would have. I keep thinking of all these ideas that would be really cool to make as some kind of Thorncraft expansion, but the problem is I don't know anything about modding. I mean, I don't know anything about coding in general. Well, that's not true. I do know a little bit. I used to do the uh, computer science thing at school, and I did the... I think what we had to... We had to make a program that you could put your own data in. Anyway, <laughs> getting a little bit off topic there. Let's try out these uh, these new stones. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we've got the paving stone of travel. Kind of expensive, but that's okay. It looks like that's going to need switching over, but this was about to use these two, so... Fire in auto. Can these be switched around at all? No, it has to be the right other way. So that's the paving stone of warding and the paving stone of travel. I just kind of like watching those things go back up to full. Yeah, I'm going to have to switch over the allegiances. I still haven't built that piston thing. We might start off next episode by doing that, or I will have finished it and just show you guys. Anyway, so this one is the paving stone of travel. If I stick a bunch of these down. Hello. Oh, okay. So, like, oh. So that gives us speed 2 and jump boost, but only if we're moving, I think. Yeah. Wow. Wow! Speed 2? No way. Okay, let's put these in the ground a little bit, and let's see if we can do, like, a little bit of a running test here. Hello. Get that worn off. So if I do that... Uh, that did not trigger. Trigger! Whee! Do you have to be right over it? No. Yeah. I got nothing, Haas. Maybe if I do two of them together, that might work a little bit better. Get Paving Snow Travel. Whee! <laughs> wow, that goes like all the way to here. Let's see, if I, st if I get another two of these set up. So, you can imagine where this is going, can't you? It's sort of like you have roads in your base made of these. Wow. 
Oh, that didn't that didn't buff me back up. Okay. You sort of have to go back to normal speed. And sometimes it doesn't even t turn on. Give me power! Speed! No speed. Yeah, those are kind of not going away. Huh? Okay. I, I, I just need to learn how to use these. Well, that's enough of a play with those. What about these guys? The paving stones of warding. So it seems like that they work on uh, mobs, but uh, it's daytime, so we can't actually test these out on any unfortunate souls, unfortunately for today. But I'm thinking that these are pretty much what they said on the tin. If you put these in the ground, bad guys can't go across them. Yeah, yeah, it's like an invisible wall. Oh, and it gives you jump boost too. Wait a minute, jump boost. Okay, no, because jump boost is in the game, but you can't make the potions. You only can make those potions in 1.8. That is really cool. That is some really cool stuff right there. Oh, but I'm, I'm not quite sated for research yet. Not quite sated yet. I really think something like this would be really nice. The flux scrubber. That's going to save some block placing by the sound of it. A boon for the messy thaumaturge. You mess a peep. So that's going to be three Prekintasha, three Vinculum, three Aya, and three Aqua. If I go ahead and pick that up, that does not unlock anything. Did these unlock anything? No, they're just kind of cool blocks to have. Anyway, let's have a look at the flux scrubber. Even the most skilled thaumaturge occasionally leaves a mess in the form of flux. It is a nuisance everyone has to deal with. But this machine removes the drudgery involved. The flux scrubber, when powered with Aeves, will slowly remove any form of flux within 16 blocks of where it is placed. What's more, it is able to reclaim a small portion of the magic that makes up the flux in the form of Precontatio Essentia. Whoa! Its internal buffer is very small and it will continue operating even when full. So it must be emptied if you wish to reclaim all the essentia. Well, this is what I thought was going to happen with the Lembics. But as it turns out, if the Lembic fills up and then the internal storage tank inside the alchemical furnace fills up, then the machine just stops. But, okay, this one you need to drain it constantly. So you need to have the essentia tubes put hooked up to your Prakintashio jar. Okay. So there it is. It takes an arcane bellow. The Vs filter essentia tube. So I could actually build this right now. Sure, why not? Let's go ahead and build it. I have the materials. <laughs> I've got arcane... Where'd they go? Arcane bellows. What? No. Oh, that's right, because I put them on the jar. Okay. <laughs> on the tube, rather. I was just like, wait, what? Where'd it go? But I haven't stopped recording! Okay, what's the effective tool on this guy? Looks like an axe. Axe a doodle doo. Hey, I asked you a question. Hey. So two of those. We're also going to need... I've gotten a recipe already. Filter. I have a spare one of those. It's been sitting here for ages. And... That and that. So we should be good. Uh, my pipes are over here. No, in there. There we go. i got five left. I need to get some more of those now. Because I'm way too low. <laughs> two of those. That. And yeah, I've got everything now, so let's head back up. My hunger is too low. My hunger is too low. Man, this place is an absolute mess. I really want to get working on this base. So you go up the top. You guys down the bottom. These two right there. This guy. And these two. So that's relatively cheap. Flex scrubber. It's a flex scrubber. I hope it makes a cool sound. We need it to make like a sort of sound like a mop on sort of like wet tiles. That's the sound we need. <laughs> so, okay, you're supposed to put this flex scrubber somewhere over here, but isn't it, wouldn't it add to the uh, asymmetry of this if I put it nearby? Not sure on that one. Anyway, let's go ahead and scan it with the Thorme. I haven't scanned the other things. Where'd he go? Over here. Here you go. Flex Scrubber has 5 air, 4 aqua, 2 
Uh, the five metallum, six auto, and one break in Tarsio. That was almost a mouthful. Okay, let's go ahead and bonk it down. I probably won't be able to use the infuser while this is here. Looks kind of cool. And I'm guessing I can... Let's just quickly check underneath. You can probably plug into the bottom. It sort of looks like it. That you can plug into there. Well, let's just quickly, while I remember, let's go ahead and scan those paving stones of warding and travel while they're out. Yeah, these uh, paving stones are really cool. We can use them around a the base, and I must have picked these other ones up, so... Throw it on the ground. The paving stone of warding. One Precatatio. That is of travel is one Precatatio and one Terra! Travel wins. <laughs> okay. So, guys... That is it for this episode of Thorncraft 4.2 with Bedros. Hope that you enjoyed it. <laughs> I had a heap of fun today. I hope that you guys did too. Thank you very much for watching. Kia kaha. And I'll see you in the next video. Says the Infernal Furnace. <laughs>